Hi bodies, welcome to Mass Games, my name is Simon. Today I'm bringing you Fields of Arla. Now this is the highest and heaviest complexity rating game there is that uh, I've reviewed so far. And for that reason I actually have set up the pieces in advance. So this is the Foreland edition. This was a Z-Man edition for English language, but it's changed a bit. Apologies if the sound goes a little bit. I'm going to be bringing pieces over as I do it. So, you are agriculturally farming in the northern parts of Germany. And this, design, this game, designed by Uwe Rosenberg, is highly autobiographical. His mother um, is actually lives in a sort of village whereby she like, sorts out the mill and things like that. And yeah, peat farming is a massive thing. And personally, with is uh, also from a big peat farming area too. And yes, it's a very interesting game whereby resources are very, very tight. It uh, can really demoralise you and worry you for the first few plays. And in fact, I lost my first five games of this. It's a one to two play game, takes 60 minutes to two hours, which considerably comes down once you've played it uh, more than once. You're going to need a stable, something like this. So this goes back over there. And what this represents is a barn where you can have your buildings and various places that you can go off to market. So you have one per player. So I've already laid the pieces out, as you can see, and the little spots, they tell you where they go. And I'm going to move one out of shots because we won't need it for explaining if I'm showing you just set up for one player. So you need one of those each. You're also going to need a large area of land where you're going to be going to as well. And yeah, it's a game where you try to get the most victory points, and there are lots of different ways to do it, like a point salad kind of game. And as you can see down here, there is some peat. So now you want to kind of separate little things into small containers. And now I need to find a peat. So that is peat. You start off the game with a stool, which contains an horse, a horse. And that can become other things later on in the game. And it's a game where you have to be feeding your people. You need to be heating up your home and ultimately create the best farm possible. Now, it's not just a farm, it's literally a farming village. You're trying to get better buildings as well. You start off with some flax, you start off with some, uh, some corn, some grain, and you have these fields as well. And as you can see, you might spot that, minus four victory points if you haven't completed that by the end of the game. So you can flip them over and get one minus point, and then get more flax, sorry, more peat on there too. This is a video I'll be doing a solo playthrough because I think a lot of these points will click. This is probably for people who may have played the game or also people who are just curious about this game. It's currently ranked about 41st on Board Game Geek, so it's very, very, very highly rated. And it's my 20th game by Uwe Rosenberg I've played now, potentially for more than that. It came out two years for Feast for Odin, which is even higher rated. And that's for up to four players. I'm going to move this out of shot because there's a heck of a lot more stuff to show you. So that's going to go there. As you can see, it's tr tricky, quite tricky to show you that they're already fairly zoomed out. Now you need the main board, where there are 30 actions you can do, but on any given round, typically only 15. Okay, so as you can see, there's a huge amount of things you can go to. As you can see, you need to print it in a certain language to get all the things on here. So it looks beautiful. It's uh, had a quite a lot of um, input from the, the illustrator, Dennis Lockhausen. And it's a game whereby you're going to choose a player colour. So let's say I'm red, either red or yellow. And you're going to place out your pieces over here. Now, this edition actually had a piece missing. So I'm missing a red counter here. Additionally, uh, one of the food markers is actually missing part of its thing too. So actually I'm playing actually with a yellow board, which is pretty handy for this video. So you can lay out these pieces here. You have various things. You have like skins, which you could use for various things. You have cloth and grains, that's grain. You've got some wool and goods here, some like yarn, and you've got some flax. So again, you're trying to get the most victory points. Something I don't necessarily like about the game, it doesn't immediately sort of say, well, you can get victory points doing this, 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 as to what is the best mechanism. So we've laid out our board. We've got places we can go to. We have a board, we can get more things just out of shot up the top there, as you can see. And as you can see, it takes up quite a lot of space. And for a video, that can be quite tricky. So let me tell you more about what you can be doing. So on your turn, so you have a number of rounds. Maybe that's good I've shown you. We have nine rounds where you have a summer phase, 
whereby we're going out in July. You know, in July, you can go out in August, September, October, so doing four actions. Then you have November infantrying, whereby something happens again. And those normally involve a number of actions which are printed over on your board over here. And that represents that at the end of November, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be feeding yourself. But firstly, if you have two sheep, currently we don't, but I'll show you what will happen, you'll be getting a, um, a food. Food is a blue circle icon there. If you have five, you're gonna get two food, eight sheep, you can get three food. For each of your flax fields and your grain fields, you're gonna be getting an extra one of those each as well, some more storage. And then for each forest, which we currently don't have, but they're just up top of the board and look like this. Not only is it worth two victory points for having one, you're gonna get a piece of timber. So, or wood. So then at the end of that season, you're then gonna to have to spend three foods. So this comes down and you need to spend two peat. You can't spend this peat, you have to got some peat already. You do start off the game with some peat though. You start off with three pieces of peat and you start off with some other things some clay. So I need to uh, move this all up a bit to show you what you're going to have. So you're going to have three pieces of peat. You're going to have brick, which is one side. Note that you need to be spending a peat to make it into a brick, which is worth a victory point at the end. And you're also going to have four pieces of wood. And quite nicely, nicely artistically done. So you're going to have four of these pieces and there are actions later on which allow you to turn this timber worth half a victory point. So I just slot it in this little gap here just to get it all in shot. Okay, so things to bear in mind. So you have four actions and then once all these have gone, remember, you could be able to feed yourself for three. Then what happens, this moves on to the next round and then you can pick these winter actions. You see this white zone, that's what's winter and that's spring, summer kind of thing. Okay, so where do you want to go? Uh, well, let's just reset all these things here. Apologies for not doing that earlier. You can consider to do literally anything you fancy doing. The thing is, at the end of the game, if you're playing multiplayer, you ideally want a better score than your opponent to win the game. If you're playing it solo, they say 110 points is a good score. Again, it took me five attempts to actually get 115 to get what's called a remarkable score. And now I'm going to go in a bit more detail about the things you'd be doing. So. There are also other things you can refer to, which I haven't used too much, of equipment and kind of an overview of what's going on. The rule book is uh, pretty good for the most part. And it's actually written by Uwe Rosenberg as well. So that's very uh, impressive and uh, yeah, well put. And there's gonna be a score pad where you can list down your scores. Now the reason for doing this video is actually I played this game five times the day I first played it in a day, which obviously is pretty significant for, for any game, to be honest. But uh, now we've laid everything out, we can tell you about a few more things. We have travel experience. You can gain points by going to these locations, you flip them over, in this case there's a shadow of a dragon, and it goes down here. And at the end of the game, we're not doing anything. But if you go to Bremen and flip that over, you're now going to get three points at the end of the game. So with most things in your shots, I think this is uh, in a good enough position to kind of show you what you could be doing. So um, I could choose to go wherever I fancy going, bearing in mind that at the end of the round, I need to be feeding myself two pieces of peat. Well, that's fine. I'm going to be getting four victory points lost for having this there. So let's just say for my first turn, I just go here with my colonist and I don't know if that's fully in shot, but I'll just show you there's a colonist action over there. Let's try and zoom in a bit. And I think it's bringing, picking it up. I'm going to that colonist position, which that is there, yeah. So I'm going here and I'm gonna flip this over just for a fun show what I'm doing. So I'm gonna lose only minus one. So technically I've improved my score by three. I take from the supply and place out four pieces of peat. It doesn't really have to go exactly in the spots. Now again, in terms of the art, it's quite interesting because exactly where those trees are, you can see the, the stumps. Okay, so now I've got some more peats. What else can I do? Well, let's go for getting a dike. A dike allows me to, again, you lose three points at the end of the game if those things are not covered off at the end. Let's try and zoom in and see if we can. Yeah, nice. So you can lose a point at the end if you haven't done that. 
So I'm now going to choose to go for the dike. And what you can do is at the minute, to go to the dike, I'm going to get a cow or a sheep. So you're going to actually stick on these stickers, get a cow out, put it on your dike. You can't put it in your stall. Any one type of animal can go in there. And then what's going to happen is you're going to able to move up your dikes. So moving left to right as an example. And now suddenly these are going to go up. So it's going to go up by, well, one, two, oh no, just one, because currently shovel pairs are listing as one. Okay, so that bit is done. Let me just uh, zoom out a bit again. Now moving on to the next bit. Okay, so I've got two more actions left. Remember, if I'm playing with somebody else, I might want to get the woodcutter I can't. Now, you've got all these space over here, these are tools. As you can see, you can't fully see it based on obviously having to show it as much as possible in shots. But you have a little engine building here, so you have a bit of kind of a, a tech tree. So if I want to go here, I can move up my workbenches by two by one position. So let's just show you that. I'm going to spend two pieces of clay. Again, annoyingly, that doesn't show the same thing, but it is. It's just you don't need to have the piece turn into brick. Because if you did that, you flip it over. So now you've gone up. So also, I've gone up two positions, and then I can also move up here too. So I can move anything else up, which means if I go there, I get more things of it. It's more efficient. So I'm actually going to move this up by one position, spending my timber. I'm then also going to spend a clay, sorry, another wood, to move up here as well. So whenever I choose to get clay, I've got more things to do. Now I've got my final action, and I think I can choose to imitate. If I go down the bottom here. I have some things where if somebody's already been somewhere, I could go there, spending two food, and do something again. On this occasion, I won't. I've got enough food to feed myself. Um, I've got my cow. Um, I'll show you what a building looks like. I'm going to get a plow. Here's a plow. It tells me my cost. It's worth three victory points. And I have to spend some stuff. So I need to be spending... Let me move this up a bit. I need to be spending a piece of timber and a cow or a horse. I'll spend the horse, I'll tell you one in a moment. And now I've got this plow. Now, because I did that, for every plow, I also get either a flax field or a grain field. I'm gonna go for a grain field. That needs to go somewhere which doesn't allow the water to get past. So the minute, that is fine. Because that's in place, that's my barrier. Okay, and now that's all my actions placed out. Now you go into end of uh, that November period. And as you can see here, I'm now gonna get various abilities. I have one cow. So by having one cow, I get one piece of food. For each grain field, I get another bit of storage. That's two, because I've got two. I get one piece of flax, so that goes up by one. And then I have to spend three food. So three food comes down, and I have to spend two peat. Now, we now move on to the winter phase, which is over on the other side of the board, that snowy bit over here. So you take your things off, you place them on the other side, just down there, and you're going to go again. Remember, I've only got one piece, which is fine, because in winter, you only need food, you don't need to have peat. So going through the whole thing again, now this also moves down, so it's moved down to two. And I can do various things. I could choose to go and get the, uh, the peat boat, which gives me some more peat. Again, I don't need peat at the minute. And there's nothing that I really need, but bear in mind, there are some buildings here and I could choose to try and get a building. These will give me some victory points at the end. So you can kind of see what your opponent's doing, what they have. But just to show you some different actions, I'm gonna go over here to get to grain. I'm going to get myself another cow because at the end of this season, there's some breeding that can happen. At any time, these can go in here, especially now the horse has left, but I could have moved them in earlier. And I get a sheep, which again is pretty handy because I want to show you what happens with the sheep. So here's my little wooden sheep. It's going to go on there. I've got a second action. And let's go. So uh, let's go up on the workbench again just to show you how these things work. So we're going to, we haven't got, we've got some clay left. 
The trouble is, as you'll see now, I get some more abilities. If I move up, then I haven't got any of the other stuff to move things up to. So I choose not to do that. I choose to go here, I spend a food, to go down, and I get four pieces of timber. Sorry, four pieces of wood. Which could be useful because I might then want to try and upgrade other things. So when I go there, it's more efficient. So now I could do that. So now let's go here and I'm going to spend uh, these two. So I'm going to spend my pieces of clay and I can move up. So that was there. I think it's got up there now. So I can also move three other things. So I'm going to take these three pieces of wood and move up one, two, uh, let's move the fleshing beam. It's going to give me a victory point at the end of the game as well. And my final action, now look, I haven't got enough food to feed myself. So I've got my final action. The one thing to bear in mind is if you do not have enough food, you can spend flax, sorry, grain, which I do have, or animals, which I don't want to do at the minute. So now I'm going to think about anything else I want to do. I can copy an action, so I could do something again. It's going to cost me two, though. So I'm going to choose to, and that's what I'm referring to, this thing down here, the labourer. Okay, so... I'm going to choose to, yeah, just do it. Let's get some peat. Ready for the next round, maybe. One, two, three. Okay, end of the round. So now we're going to do our stuff down here, which is the bottom left of those two actions. And we're going to breed. So my cows have made another one. They've multiplied. For each sheep, I get a wool. So this gives me a woolen piece up here. And then... I need to feed myself. So I'm going to feed myself a two and spend a grain. So I chose to do a different action that way. Could have used a sheep if I was out of grain too. Now you take your pieces off again, go back to where they were before, originally, which is July, August, September, October. And uh, go again. So remember, I've got to be feeding. So this time I'm going to take this to the very top to the fisherman. Increase this by one, unfortunately it's missing out that red piece. So that increases by one, I get a sheep. So I grab my sheep. And for each fish trap, so it's up to three, I'm gonna go up by three positions. So I'm gonna get three fish, three food even. Three food, again, that sorts me for this round. What can I do next? Well, again, anything you wanna pick, but obviously the more efficient, the better. I'm actually gonna do, go to the colonist again. Flip another board, so that's kind of three net points. Chuck out some more peat. And something else you can do is I can now choose to cut some peat. So I'm going to use my spade. I've currently got three. And let's me remove three off a tile. Actually, no, I won't do that yet. Um, I might want to go to the clay worker. So I have enough peat for this round. I'm going to go to the clay worker, get three more clay because... In future, I could be cutting this peat a bit more effectively. So I've got one, two, oops, one way around. One, two, three. Now it's end of that season again. So you're paying three. And then you're going to choose to do whatever else is listed. You're getting grain, getting some grain. So I'm going to get two more. I'm going to get some flax. And then I've paid my three. I've got to pay two peat. So again, I've got enough peat for my next uh, summer. And then obviously it all goes across again. And we're already on to round four. So it isn't a very long game necessarily. It does speed by. But suddenly that analysis paralysis is what it is you want to pick up. So I'll leave it there. But obviously, um, hopefully that's kind of making sense. When I do that solo playthrough, it's, uh, I'll be using commentary, but it'll be a bit more swifter perhaps than what I'm choosing to pick. And I might choose to do some of the solo challenges, such as the lowest score possible. I managed to get minus 19 via various things such as leaving these um, uncovered so they stay as they are. It's minus 12 at the end of the game, minus 15 by having literally having those things done, not covering over my large barn so you can lose points here as well. So again you don't want to lose points typically but uh, it's something to be, be aware of. Now something I haven't shown you is getting vehicles. So if you happen to get a vehicle such as over here you can get a vehicle, you have to pay its costs, you need to spend a horse in this instance, five timber, and you can place into these last spaces. Additionally, not losing minus three, you're going to gain one as well. 
And if you happen to any point you want to, you can just say, well, I need some food. You can say, I'm going to go to Emden. In this case, you can then say, right, I'm spending this, Pete, that I have, flipping it, and then you're going to be getting three bits of food. Three. Done. And then when you do clear ups into the season, this goes on here, which is very cute to see. And your final victory points will be based on how far up here it is. So you can look at your score pad at the end of the game and you can see how many cloth tiles. So all that uh, wool I've been accumulating, if I went here, it would have given me one per thing. So currently I can use two weaving looms based on my tech position. So two weaving looms allows me to basically get two of these. So at the end of the game, two victory points. But if I placed in here at the end of the season, that flips because it's now turned itself into a nice little jacket, winter jacket. So it's now worth even more victory points. So it's a very tight game because there's only a few spots you can go and you're going to need to do various things. The downside, of course, is you won't be able to do everything. And it's going to be very difficult to try and get the clay to do that to make other actions more efficient. Having said that, it's more about actually it's the actions which are tighter. That's the biggest resource. Food to a degree, because to get some high victory point scoring things, 15 victory points, you're spending 15 food. Now going to place like Bremen, I mean, it means you mean that you often need a bigger cart to flip that over. To flip that over, you're then needing to place this in there. And if you happen to have completed winter clothing, you've got some summer clothing and you've got some leather goods, then you can flip that over, not only getting yourself, in this case, you're only getting yourself one victory point, but that 30 food, and you can only max out at 30, you can't get more, you could be spending to get yourself one of these. You might well get two of these, but to need that, you need to be going to get some, uh, some bricks and some timber. So equally, you can be using these spaces, as long as it's the right shape and size. So for example, these are fine. You're gonna place them in here, and at the end of the season, it's going to flip as long as you paid your coal, your peat even. Equally, you can do the same with timber. There's one exception, whereby if you go for certain carriages, then you can't use a double space for those single item goods. It's got to be something like going to Alrig, like that, whereby you're choosing to lose a horse. So, again, there's lots of different things you can do. It's a very open game in terms of strategy and how you want to choose to go about winning. Uh, some things are better than others, and it's just a thing about time, um, and the more you play it, the more you get into it. It's very addictive, and my rating, it's very good. It seems strange to only call it a seven. Um, I think it's just that that barrier to entry around realising it's, you know, if you want to try and optimise and maximise stuff, it's you, you might have a very nice time playing that. But at the same time, you might find that it's... Uh, you might find it, yeah, it's a bit a bit too overwhelming. Like I said, it's grown on me more and more. And based on the advice that just, just pretend you're a farmer and you're trying to get different buildings. And again, that kind of easing of pressure really helped me a lot and actually amplified my experience with it. And actually, it was the first time I won it when I didn't feel stressed at all. So that's something to be aware of. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff on here. Again, 15 open spaces. And you might want to just scan through and say, well, that doesn't really help me. That doesn't really help me. And uh, it's something to be aware of. So as you'll see, I'm not really packing the game away, just resetting it. And that's because I will be playing this game um, again after this video. And I'm just setting it up again. So, um, yeah, like I said, great components. Um, I think I do prefer it to Fields of Feast for Odin. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, cave versus Cave and Agricola and Caverna. I can see lots of similarities to this game here. And the first time I played, like I said, it was pretty um, pretty beastly in experience, but uh, it's very quick solo. I've played games in, in like 15 minutes, which is great. It's um, If you have any questions though, please let me know. And if you found this of interest, please hit the like button. It's not the easiest game maybe to try to explain unless you're ready to play it. And that's partially because you know, there's so many things to go off. But crucially, it's a game about getting victory points, satisfying your needs. If you can't satisfy your needs, you're gonna lose victory points two per thing that you can't do each turn and you're going to get points based on clothing tiles and building point equipment in your barn you're going to get tools so that's equipment in your barn tools are these things over here goods tracks so how far up on these tracks are you you're going to get victory on your home boards when you're getting out buildings and you're going to get animals so animals are a bit of a strange one 
it's a bit like running Knizia. It's like the lowest one you're going to score the most with. So if I've got one cow, one sheep, and all of these horses, the thing you have the most of scores you nothing. That's the best way of explaining it. Let's say you've then actually got two cows. The thing you've got the least of, you score two points for each thing you have the least of. So I have one, I score two points. I score one point for each thing you've got the second least of. The rule book doesn't word it quite like that. They just say, uh, whatever you have the least of, score two victory points. However, least includes zero is what they're saying. So if you've got zero sheep and one cow and a bazillion horses, your least is this one, uh, most is this one, it scores you nothing. You have zero of these, this you've got in the middle, so you're only gonna get one per each one. So you kinda want a bit of each. And the whole plan of this thematic tie is, you're meant to be building a farm and being quite equal. And in America, you typically only farm or one particular kind of animal, from what I'm hearing. So instead of that, you actually wanna be making sure that you have a bit of each, if you wish to. And again, try and focus as best you can on getting a decent score. And it's strange why getting a decent score is how they choose to have the game just you know get the most there's no money in the game or anything like that but it's something that you might find of interest and again it's uh yeah i'm really glad i have played it it's, it's been a, a great fun great enjoyment a great distraction shall we say but it's it's not for everybody by any means as with any game and i think it can win some people over but this is obviously quite a big ask when you've got such a big board with so many pieces and components and uh, a plethora of, you've got so many building things over here. I mean, you can go off and just be a flax farmer if you want. You might not win the game, but you, you know, you've had fun being a flax farmer. So like I said, hopefully that was uh, okay without me being too rambly. And like I said, any questions, please let me know. And for any of those uh, Fields of Arda fans, hopefully I haven't butchered this too much. All right, thanks very much. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.